Saint-Fagnon quadruple. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Yet another one from San Fignon, and this is their quadruple. Now, I have tried, or just reviewed in fact, the blonde from San Fignon, which was 7.5%, and that was, that was a pretty hefty blonde Belgian beer, but it was good. It got a 10 out of 10. And I'm not surprised because the Christmas beer was a 10 out of 10. That's one of the best I've tried. And there has been some good wine from Belgium. But that blonde, I was, you know, I was debating whether to give it nine and a half because I said there was better out there. And it was going through my mind, well, what's better than this? And I couldn't think of one that was better. I could think of quite a few that was equal that I gave 10 out of 10. Not one was that was better. So eventually I gave it a 10 out of 10. Now, the quadruple, I've never tried before. And I'm quite looking forward to it because if it's as good as the Christmas beer and it's as good as the blonde, then it's going to be a good one. I've also tried the triple as well, which was renowned for being one of the best in the world. I, I thought it was good, don't get me wrong. Best in the world, I think that's pushing it a little bit. But I think if the blonde had been billed as a triple, because there isn't much difference between the two, I think that would have been one of the best triples because it was really good. But we've got a quadruple today, and quadruples, as you know, are pretty hefty. This is 11%, so you've got to take it easy with this shit. You cannot drink this like it's going out of fashion. You just, and I've tried, believe me, years ago. You know, I, I used to go to Belgium quite a lot. I had a, well, I still have got a lot of mates over there, and we used to do gigs over there quite a lot. We were quite band, I was in, was quite popular in Belgium. And I love playing over there. It was a fantastic place. Normally it was in West Flanders. We rarely played in, I don't think we ever played in Walloon, the Walloon region. It was mostly Bruges, Brussels, we'd done a couple of gigs. But yeah, it was mainly the West Flanders, and or Flanders, around that area. But the beer has always been, you know, it's just been sublime. I was, at, in fact, just before this review, one of my mates had texted me, one of my Belgian mates, and I was saying, oh, I'm drinking this uh, quadruple. And he said, oh, I'm not really into beer much now. I'm, I'm more into my red wine. And yeah, he got dog's abuse. If you live in a country that produces some of the best beer in the world and you want to drink wine, you can fuck off. I hate people that do that. Germans as well. Why do Germans drink wine when they, oh, it winds me up, it winds me up, and I must calm down. There you go. But this stuff is one of the beers that I've always wanted to try because I've really got into saint Fignon lately and I've bought a load of their beers. I've bought some of their triples, I've bought some of their blondes and I've bought this quadruple thinking that it was gonna be one of their best because I was comparing it to the Christmas beer. So I've still got that in my mind and I'm hoping it's not gonna let me down. So, with that in mind, let's investigate this beer. Three thirty ml bottle, eleven percent. It is a quadruple. Now, quadruples are around eleven percent. I've had some that are slightly stronger. I've had some that are slightly weaker at ten and a half. So, yeah, once you go, I think once you go past the nine and a half. 10% ABV, that's when you're in quadruple territory. And I know I've mentioned it before, but it shouldn't need saying that you don't get pints of this and drink it like it is a pint because you will end up in a serious mess. But having said that, this isn't for guzzling. This is one of them degustation beers where you just 
take a few sips and savour the flavour because that's what it's all about with Belgian beer. It's all about the flavour. So with that in mind, let's get it open. Let's see what's going on. Right, Saint Fignon, as you know, or may not know, are an independent brewer, a family run brewer. They've been going since 1873 and they are still family run now, which is always good and always a good sign. There is the cap. Well done, autofocus. It's going in the collection. Yeah. Let's get it into the glass. Now, this might look lively, and the head may look a bit big, but that's going to dissipate quite rapidly because the alcohol in this will just absorb all that CO2. Now, this has gone through, this is top fermenting, of course, and it's gone through a secondary fermentation in the bottle due to the contents of the candy sugar that's been put in here. And what will happen is it will carbonate again in the bottle that's why it's so lively i want to get this over quite quickly because i don't want that head to dissipate i want to try it through the head wow super sweet super strong fruit and caramel caramel malt really strong on the fruit though that's really good it's like banana cherry dark fruit, plum. Oh, it smells so good. There is a strong hint of that candy sugar though. That really is dominant in there. But there's a big toffee and chocolate malt. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but there's like a coconut sweetness to it too. That's what it's putting me in mind of. If you can imagine, this is what it's coming across as. If you ever had the red bounty bars where it's got the dark chocolate and the coconut in the middle. It's reminding me of that, which is really interesting. Coconut is not something I would associate with the quadruple style of beer, but I absolutely fucking love coconut. So there you go. Bottoms up. Oh, ethanol is the big thing on this. And this is what I normally find with, wow, what a long finish. I'll get onto that in a minute. With these quadruples, the first mouthful is usually the ethanol and then your palate adjusts. It's, it tastes like spirit alcohol and you don't get much else because it's mostly froth I have to say, this head is being preserved quite well, considering it's 11%. But you do get that big, strong ethanol. And the first mouthful isn't really indicative of what the beer tastes like. So now the palate's adjusted, let's dive in again. Wow, that finish is so, so long and moorish. It's like bitter, dark chocolate. That's what the finish is reminding me of. And there's little hints of coconut in there. It's not my imagination. I'm sure that's what I'm getting. It's like dark chocolate and coconut. But there's also big fruit in there as well. And it's, it's, like, a, it's like a Christmas cake with an edge to it and the ethanol is still big on this. I can still get it, but I'm also getting all the other flavors as well. The mouthfeel is really nice. It's not obtrusive at all. Now the head, as I say, is being preserved quite well. Normally at 11%, even less ABV, that would have dissipated, but it's still there. But the carbonation is still there too, which is no mean feat. Because as you know, ethanol will absorb CO2. And once it does that, Bang goes your head. I 
there's quite strong candy sugar flavours in this too. But that long finish on it is just like bitter dark chocolate, a little hint of coconut, little bitterness to it as well. And they say that there's English hops in here. They don't say what English hops, but I am getting a little touch of hot bitterness, but it's it's minimal, if you know what I mean. I think all that bitterness is coming from roasted malt and the ethanol, which is, or which leaves a bitter finish, but it's really nice. I'm liking this. It's a very subtle hint of banana on this as well. The mouthfeel, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cloying, uh, sti uh, sugary stickiness in the mouth, if you know what I mean, which is really a characteristic of Belgian quadruples. Some of the cheaper quadruples don't have that. This has got it in abundance and I really like it. It's what, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm looking down on anyone, but it's what your novice drinker, not that I'm a professional, but it's what your novice drinker would say, syrup. It tastes very syrupy, but it's not. That's the, the candy sugar, which you need in there to balance out the big ethanol and the, the hot bitterness that's in there and the roasted malt as well. Oh, that really is good. That really is fantastic. And that is yet another winner from saint Fignon. Really liking it, look at the lacing on that glass. That is absolutely superb. I should really pace myself because this is going to go to my head if I keep drinking it like I am. But I'll have one more. Oh, it's really good. That is really Moorish. And not only that, it's it's quite drinkable too. The flavours, the flavours aren't as big as some of the quads that I've tried. This is quite well balanced, if you know what I mean, and it makes it quite drinkable, which is dangerous in my opinion, because at 11%, you don't really want to be getting too fond of this of a night time. This is one for having at the end of the night, just to finish everything off. So what's the verdict on saint -Vignon? Very good, very good indeed. I really like it and I like this brewery. I like how they have a little bit of a twist on their beers, which is a little bit different. Now for me, the little twist on it was the coconut that's in this. It's very subtle and you have to concentrate to pick it up. But the aroma was putting me in mind of a red bounty bar with dark chocolate and coconut and i did get that in the flavor too which was really nice and that's novel because i don't think i've ever had a a quad with coconut flavor so yeah that is unique i really like it i'm going to give it a nine out of ten it's not the best quad i've tried i mean there are some better ones in my opinion the for me the Bravan apostle They've called it, they called that a brown ale, but that was 11%, and for all intents and purposes, that was a quad, in my opinion, and that was absolutely superb. So for me, that will take some beating. But this is not far behind, and that's why I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. It really is a good one. And it's very in keeping with the quality of the other stuff that they do as well. I mean, the triple is fantastic. The blonde is really good. And the Christmas beer, too, is probably one of the best. But this is really good as well. So I think nine out of 10 is a fair mark for this. And I'll definitely recommend it. I don't think they do this in any of the supermarkets in the UK, but you can get it online. It is not cheap. It will cost you nearly, nearly a fiver. 
but it's one of them beers where you you know you, it's three thirty mil, but it's you know you're paying fine for it, but it's it's not it's not one of them beers that you're going to be knocking back. This is one to savour, and you'd have it with some really strong meat or something like that. You know, some slices of pastrami or something. You know, if you, as if you're into eating and drinking, I'm not. I'm just into fucking drinking to be honest. <laughs> but there you go. But yeah, nine out of ten recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>